senior year, they were pushing about, hey, you need to grab an internship. And, yep. you know, I'm I'm like, all right, I already hit up all these conferences. I'm like volunteering for these events. I'm shaking hands. And, you know, the the what is it? The intern guy who helps you get internships. I was hitting them up every day. I said, yo, whenever you got to open it, let me know. I, I got my resume ready. I already got it sharp. Got it. And then everybody in the class was getting it. I mean, I got interviewed for a few times and, you know, I hit them with the, you know, I'm an athlete. I'm trying to balance this out because they want to see what you do. Yeah, you got to sell it. Time. Yeah, you got to sell it. It's really like interviews. You got to pitch the best version of yourself. You got it. They don't care about your technical skills because that's what they can teach you on the job. So it's really, could he fit in this culture? And I'm like, all right, you know, I'm hitting up interviews and then I'm like, all right, I'm waiting for certain interviews to come back and then I hear, you know, classmates in the back like, yo, I got this interview at XYZ and I'm like, dang, I, I applied to that spot. I ain't even hear back from them yet. Save me some pimping, man. This the coldest podcast you'll ever hear. The way we coming with it, people witnessing great. Be a part of the journey. I would say it's perfect timing, but it's God's timing. We locked in the time council with this one. We got timeless topics. Guess what? I'm your mother's favorite host. Your little brother's OG. I go by the name of Armand Lindsay. But the neighborhood called me Big P. I want to welcome y'all to Big Boss Talk. Season 2, The Rebirth. Let's ride. And welcome to a black man. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's a good Saturday here in January, coming to the late end of the month. Man, I got a, a special, a special, I always, all my guests are special, so I don't know why I always say a special guest, but man, this guy right here is another, um, if y'all was tuned into the last episode, you know, my first college roommate uh, was on here, Michael Thomas, but now I got my, you know, pretty much, you can say my second college roommate. We, we was pretty much at his dorms every single day anyway, or he was at ours, um, and so we got, uh, Anthony Blair, man, and so Anthony, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Anthony, man. Um, Anthony is a he's a funny dude. He's a great guy, good friend to have. Um, he'll give you the shirt off his back. Him and his wife, they do a lot um, just to help other people out, man. And, and, and when I look at them, I always think about like what can I do in my own personal way to help somebody? How they help, you know, how they help others? Um, because you know what they're doing is affecting a lot of people. Um, lives, whether they know it or not, but later in life, maybe a five years, ten years from now, somebody will look back and say the the Blairs were, you know, they helped me. You know what I'm saying? They got me to where I needed to be. They gave me the words of wisdom, and so I always look at the Blair. I, I, you know, I don't know if he knows it, but I always try to keep tabs, and I just look up to him, and he just helped me stay focused, stay hungry, um, and just looking for ways to, you know, to help people. And so I'm gonna, um, you know, say what's up to the podcast, Blair. Hey, what's happening, y'all? <laughs> Hey, Big P, <laughs> I appreciate you for having me on, man. Yeah. You know, you said you look up to me, but you like, uh, you know, you like brother from another mother. I look up to you sometimes, man. Yeah. This one of the hardest working guys I know, man. This man appreciate can sell it. you anything. Hustling, man. <laughs> Hustling every time. I mean, appreciate I love it. it. Every time, him and mine, you know, I, I keep up with them, the success that they got going on, the podcast. Everything got me extra pumped. I be telling my wife all the time. I said, "Man, Big Keen and I and them doing big things." Thank but uh, you know, I appreciate you having me on, man. You know, I love Thank you, man, and I'm ready to get this rolling, baby. Thank you, man. Appreciate it, man. So look, I'm gonna tell everybody a little bit about you, man. So we got again Anthony Blair, uh, age 27, uh, career is a tax accountant, uh, college degree. He got his bachelor's in accounting, uh, and then he also has his MBA. Uh, years in his profession is five. Um, so he's been doing this for a while. He's probably seen a lot. He's learned a lot. Um, just gained a lot of knowledge um, through his time, you know, exiting uh, college and just being where he's at right now. But Blair, this wouldn't be big boss talk if we didn't start it off the right way. And you know what I'm talking about. We got two truths and a lie. I am six and two. Everybody, ladies and gentlemen, just know that I am over 500. Um, I'm trying to go seven and two. If Blair can get me, then he's the GOAT. But go ahead and give us your uh, two truths and a lie, my friend. Just like I told you, man, I, you know me pretty well, so this might be a little tough, man. Okay. All right, let's go. Let me see. Uh, I visited over three different, over three countries. Okay. Three or more countries. Um, I, 
can swim, <laughs> and I've never been to a professional NBA game. Ooh, that's nice. <laughs> this is this is too easy. Yeah, I had to sell you off with two of those. Okay, 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 okay. So, number one, yes, you guys travel a lot. So, going, you know, traveling over three or more countries, I believe. I mean, you guys have been the, I, I can't even, what, what, I don't even know. But you guys went to go see the tower. Not the tower, but it was in India. Well, y'all went to India or something like that? Oh, yeah, the Taj, Taj Mahal. Yeah, there we go. So, Taj Mahal. So, y'all y'all travel a lot. Uh, so, I'm going to say that's true. Swimming. <laughs> <laughs> you got I, I you can't swim, but you classify as I can get from point A to point B. So I don't know if that's what you could classify as swimming or not. And then you said you never been to an NBA game. Never been to a professional NBA. Game. Never been to a professional NBA game. Wow, that's tough because I, I'm trying to think like how you classify the swimming part. <laughs> <laughs> Because technically you can't swim. When you go to point A to point B without drowning. <laughs> so that's what you call swimming. Yeah. <laughs> so you pretty much gave us the two truths in the lie. So I'm going I'm to go with um, dang. I'm going I'm to go with uh, you know I know. <laughs> go ahead. I'm going to say nah, I believe you went to it. No professional NBA game. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, that's the lie. That's correct. Yes, okay, yeah, we go. <laughs> Boy, you got me, man. I was like, hold on. He can't swim for real. <laughs> Can you swim? Nah, I've, been, I've been trying to make it to an NBA game, and then tickets getting ridiculous. Bro. So, um, I had a few homies that wanted to go to the Charlotte game. Well, we, the Lakers came to town. And yeah. Like upper deck of about 175. I said, nah, I can have pass on that. Damn. But, man, we had a lot when of. I do go, I'm going to try to go really. Not courtside, but really where I can actually see the players. You know, I'm gotcha. willing to do that, but I ain't never making out there yet. That's dope, man. I, we we had a lot of family and friends that went to the Lakers game and saw the, my Lakers get beat by the Hornets. I was pretty pissed. We sucked this year, so I ain't really. <laughs> still on LeBron train. Yeah, I'm still, you know I'm always be on the LeBron train. <laughs> we used to have some heated arguments about LeBron. <laughs> 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 Yeah, we used to be in the dorm all night screaming. Bro. That's the relationship me and Armand had. Everybody would be like, yo, what y'all arguing for? <laughs> Armand would stand with his stance with LeBron, and I'm like, bro, he's not better than Michael Jordan. <laughs> and we'd be arguing all night. <laughs> <laughs> bro, we used to argue a lot. And it, it's not like, it was like brotherly arguing. It was like brother. It's not like it was hateful <laughs> arguments. It was more or less like, no, you wrong. You, you wrong. And then when it came down to ping pong, oh, it got ugly. Cause, cause I'ma tell you how it evolved. I used to in the beginning. I used to, I used to spank blip, pop, pop, ping pong early when we first got to college. Some somehow this man started putting in overtime, <laughs> practicing, playing defense. Right, as long as I can get this back, you know, his mathematical mind just defense, defense, defense. So it's like you couldn't really spike, and like he wasn't gonna spike, so you it wasn't gonna be no error. It was just gonna be all defense. He started doing that. I was like. Oh my god, and I just started losing. And I was like, man, he done got good. Everybody used to be like, Blair pretty good. Blair pretty. I used to be like, I used to spank this dude. How you done got good? And then I ain't gonna lie. That's how our relationship started. Yeah. Started off, you know, we you know, football got a, it was our connection. Yeah. You know, we went bowling one night and you know, we all fetched <laughs> you know. And it got to a point where, you know, Big P was like, you know, I'm the best out here. And I said, well, you might need to clean them glasses, my boy. <laughs> And boys, After that night, we just started. He was like, all right, bet. And we went back and forth. And that's when we were like, yo, I, I got to stick around this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's going to push me to the limit. Yeah, I was the uh, outlier at the group. I dressed like I was from, you know, just black. <laughs> they used to get on me all about my clothes. Like, this man's yeah, sagging in the you, mud. You, 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 you. <laughs> my church. <laughs> Let me give everybody a story. So, I got a good church, right? <laughs> and they, um... Yo, this church gave him everything. <laughs> my church is a... It, we They used to take care of the youth. All right? I don't know what church Blair went to, but... Yeah. Our church used to take care of us. And so, they used to send us care packages. You know, when I used to go back home, they'd be like... You know, they gave us socks. You know, they sent us some money. 
You know what I'm saying? So, like, my church is very giving, and them boys ain't understand that. And they used to get on me about my socks, my N1s. <laughs> yeah, I said, what kind of socks are those, baby? He said, man, my church gave it to me. I mean, I Every Sunday, I think it was a point they used to mail stuff to the room. Our mom got money, socks, clothes. I said, yo, what, what is this church giving you, bro? I said, my church barely give me a dime. <laughs> Yeah, but my, I mean, it was good. We had some funny, funny, funny moments, man. I mean, we could go for days, but we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to jump right into it. You know, the, um, you know, what we came to really talk about and really give game. I'm, I always preach, you know, on the podcast is that this is for people like when I was doing research on what I wanted to create a podcast about and just how to find my own lane and my niche I, and who my podcast is really for. I thought it was for, you know, I believe it's for, you know, the youth and just people that's, you know, not sure about what what path they want to take you know what i'm saying or they looking for ideas of how they can start maybe a business or become you know be more entrepreneurial or just how they can be successful um and see you know people of color in very you know high positions of you know i'm not we could say power and then we could just say uh just successful in general but i really believe like when i had this podcast in mind I, it was made for somebody like me somebody that is I'm fascinated by people, what they do, how they got there, um, and just really just figuring out how to find my way because a lot of uh, everybody I sit down with, they talk about like when I went to school, I had a different major in mind. I'm not using my degree. Um, and then, you know, I just, I changed because I knew I got into it and I, I didn't want to do it. So I can't wait to hear Blair because I feel like it's going to be a little bit different. But Blair, man, what is it, uh, what, what is it that you do, uh, you know, in your career? So I am a tax accountant, currently studying for my CPA license. You know, um, in the accounting field, the CPA is one of the highest regarded uh, license to have. Um, I'm located in Columbia, South Carolina. Um, and, you know, just like the title, I do taxes. But a lot of people, when they look at a, a tax accountant, they just look at, you know, taxes. We do more than that also. You know, we deal with litigation. We do with uh, forensics. Mm -hmm. You know, we do audits. We do um, a lot of nonprofit works. We do bookkeeping. So, you know, that's a whole general ally of different things that we do. You know, when people see or you might even know an accountant friend and be like, yo, could you do my taxes? And they quit to say, no, nah, I don't do that. Yeah. Because, you know, there's you got corporate accounting, but it just handles one thing about corporations. But yeah. specifically in my niche, I work at a public accounting firm in West Columbia. Okay. And, you know, our main focus is tax and other specific individual small business needs. Gotcha. So. Okay, straight off of LinkedIn. I like that. <laughs> straight off of LinkedIn. I like that. That's how you give a description right there, bro. So now, um, so, okay, so appreciate that. So now we're going to break it down a little bit further, right? The edu We want to go pre how you got into, you know, your role, right? So when you went to college, you know, obviously we both know we went to North Greenville because of the scholarship. It wasn't like our school of choice. It was just like, hey, they paying for school. Let's go. What what was, what did you want? Did you always knew you wanted to be a tax accountant or, you know, what did you have in mind that you wanted to do? So coming out of high school, you know, I wanted to be a orthodontist. You know, I have braces. Yeah. Oh, like, oh my God. Way left, right? <laughs> way left. You know, I was like, I have braces like ninth, tenth grade. And, you know, all the orthodontists orthodontist and the dentist people, they were cool people. Yeah. He was like, you know, he was like 27, 28, you know, three of them. Yeah. And they were in the office, a little office in Georgetown. They're like, yeah, man, you know, this is a sweet gig. You know, you do a little teeth, you know, you get a little free time, you get to hang out and make bank. I said, man. And one thing, I ain't never see a black orthodontist, a black dentist. So I'm like, man, I could change the game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, because everybody, we only had about two practices in Georgetown. And yeah. there were two white guys, which was no problem. But I mean, I was like, dang, you know, I could probably change the game with this. So I went in the mindset. I said, yo, let me uh, try to see what I need to do to be an orthodontist. Right. But, then, you know, NGU came. Yeah. And, you know, based on football, the boys was like, uh, hey, you don't got to pay for school, man. All you got to do is apply. You don't got to pay. Yeah. And I told mom Dukes, and she was like, yo, you know what you need to do? I said, all right. I said, and, you know, I got there and, you know, I, I looked at the curriculum and was like, all right, you got to do this extra school biology. Mm -hmm. So this ain't for me. So, yeah. you know, I switched it up to engineering. 
You know, everybody was trying yeah. to get engineering. You know, you three, were around. Three plus two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we took like the, and I think we were in one intro class or something like that. And it was like, all right, this, let me, let me stick with it. And, you know, it dropped like flies. Everybody wanted yeah, to do it. Yeah, everybody dropped. I everybody dropped. wanted to do it. Everybody did it. But the thing about our school, you know, we went to a small little private school. Mm -hmm. They didn't have an engineering program. It was like a bridge program. Yep. With Clemson. Yep. So, you know, I'm like, all right. I had to do the research on myself. I was like, all right, let me see what I need to do. I, I got up to Cal 2, bro. And, bro, it took a whole class period to do one problem. Oh, my God. I said, bro, this is not it. <laughs> so, I, I called mom, dude. So I was like, yo. I said, I can't do this no more. This is taking all day. I can't, man. It, one problem all day? I said, this it had letters, numbers, everything mixed in. I said, you know, I thought Cal 1 was all right. Yeah. And Cal 2 was a whole nother beast. Mm. So then my mom Dukes, was like, uh, in summer, I was dating my wife at the time. She was like, you know, you need to find something you're good at. Yeah. You know, and she was always like, uh, and I talked to my mom Dukes, She was like, you know, you always been decent with money. You know, I hit up some homies back at home. She yep. was like, you might need to do something with math or, you know, try to look in the business side and get in accounting. Mm -hmm. I said, um, all right. You know, I sat down and I looked at, you know, all the old past stories. You know, I remember playing AAU. Everybody back at home used to be like, yo, Blair, Blair know how to handle the money. Blair cheat. You know, he ain't no <laughs> <laughs> I remember stories where we were AAU, we would go to Myrtle Beach, yeah. play a team and you know, one of the homies wouldn't, you know, he would, he was fortunate not to have any money to grab lunch or anything. Right. I'd be like, all right, y'all, we got, you get, you get $1 meal, you get a dollar meal. Let me get your change. You get this. Yeah. So the point, you know, I can have enough where homie can get a little hat, you know, yeah. right, you can't get no number seven though, but you can get two McChickens and a water. Yeah. And we'll be good, you know. That's so that's always been me. So, you know, it kind of uh, grew on me. I said, man, let me see what I can do in this accounting. Right. And that's that's how I kind of got into accounting and, you know, fell in love with the numbers. That's crazy. So originally orthodontist, then engineering, and then we found accounting. So obviously it took some trial and error to really figure out or find like a niche or where you felt comfortable, right? Because obviously the thing about, you know, small, and this is something that, you know, when you picking a college that you want to go to you always want to pick to make sure that they're going to provide you know your major i think for us as athletes we were just more or less like you know man, i want to me personally i was like i want to play ball like I, you know I, everybody had the same hoop dreams or whatever and then you get in there and you figure out like nah this ain't gonna happen like these boys six six two two eighty i'm like six two pushing wet 260 you know what i'm saying so it's just like you, you got to look at the tangibles and you just start, you know, reality start to settle in and you're just like, all right, football ain't it. But now you you already in it, you know what I'm saying, and you're getting paid for it. So it's like you got to stick it out because you don't want to really go nowhere and really uh, cough up any money. Um, but everybody doesn't have that luxury uh, for the scholarship. So I will tell people, like, you know, if it's something that you really want to do, you know, make sure that your major offers it. But, again, me and Mike was talking, and Hannah, we were talking about how does someone know – how does someone know what they want to do without even trying it, right? Every, Hannah was saying, like, they made her take her internship at the end of her four years. I feel like it should be reversed. Why not? You should take your internship in the beginning so you can see the grunt work and be like, okay, this ain't for me. And have time to change your major because you two two years in, you're you going to add. You're already deep in there. Yeah. And so for you, it just seemed like, luckily, you caught it at the right time where, okay, it was like engineering. I had already you took some of the math requisites and you was able to just, all right, let me move into this direction versus the engineering because I'm going to tell you, they said trigonometry one, two, all in the same semester. I said, there's no way this is going to happen playing no. football. <laughs> no, yeah, not with our schedule. No. You really have to separate yourself to balance your grades. Yeah. You know, some people had that mindset and you know, not everybody had that goal. They can want it, but you know, you got to learn to alter your your, your plans, because you know we had guys that were just like, yo, I'm here for football. You yeah. Know? Took it for granted, you know what I mean? Got you. What do you tell an athlete, you know, when they go into school? Like, obviously, they're going to have their mind all about ball, 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 but what do you tell, uh, how do you, what advice would you give an athlete, you know, when they go to school, and, and you know that the, the odds are very slim of going to that next level. What do you tell them? Because a lot of these, uh, what are they called, um, 
advisors, they're going to tell you, that, oh, you play sports, you might want to do sports management. You know what I'm saying? Easy load. But then you get out and you can't do nothing with sports management. Or, you know, what do you tell somebody, you know, how do they choose what major they want to do and just give them a heads up of what, um, a, 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 you know, what does a sport athlete look like? The advice I give, man, use all your resources, man. Like, the, it, it comes to the point where some of those guys, you know, athletes didn't really have a good supporting cast or mentors or, yeah. you know, didn't even branch out. It was strictly football or whatever sport they're doing. Right. Uh, what I would tell them is, you know, be realistic. Mm -hmm. Like, write down your goals. What do you want to accomplish? Like, like you said, well, I'm, I, I mean, I didn't have the – I felt like I came in with the mindset like, all right, I enjoy football, but I know it's not going farther than what this is. Right. So let me make the best out of it. Um, you know, there's a lot of different careers out there. Sometimes those advisors are just, hey, this is my job. I tell the athletes, go ahead, get in these BS classes so they can have the perfect schedule. Right. Um, but in reality, I mean, you could do a lot more, especially at these bigger schools. Mm -hmm. You hear stories about these guys that go to UNC yeah. and take – and take a piano or piano history. Yeah. And like, <laughs> what did you do you know, with that? You had one of the best uh, business schools in the nation and you couldn't take, all you need is a general business degree and you can go anywhere. Yeah. So really what I, you know, I would tell them is, you know, stay focused and venture out. I mean, use your resources, man. Go to those events. There were events, you know, for business people that I would, you know, go separately. And I, you know, I probably mentioned it to some people. I'd be like, yo, old buddy talking, I, I might need to go and show my face so I can get connected. You know, right. that was one thing I, I really learned early on. Because right. I was like, I, I know this ain't for me in the long run. So let me try to use what I can do. Yeah, yeah we went to a small school, but, you know, there were certain events I had to, all right, let me show my face. Let me be, yeah. you know, and, you know, we, you know, we went to a predominantly white school. Yeah. And, you know, they were surprised to see one black guy in there. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. That was an eye opener for them. So I made some valuable connections in there. I was like, all right, let me do what I need to do to make sure I'm set up right. Bro. And where did that mindset come <clears throat> come from? Like, cause again, you were I, I and I and I will say Blair came to school and he was strictly like, they paying for school. You know, I like football school, but this ain't, you know what I'm saying? This ain't it. Where some people come in like they die hard like football, football, football. And so that I guess that gave you the edge of being able to Think further ahead because you knew like all right, all right it's a plan after this and i gotta prepare my i gotta use football to prepare myself for what's after college and i think you know that comes with that type of mindset maybe you already had it maybe you just you know were realistic like that um uh, but who was putting in your ear that hey you need to go to these certain rooms or you need to make these certain connections did you have a mentor was it family because if it was i, I would tell everybody you need to get that type of connection like mentors family Really, it wasn't no mentors. It was just, you know, straight old school mom and dad. Got really, it. my pops, you know, he was hardworking. He was old school where he was like, yo, you know, you go to school, you don't play around. Anything yeah. I do, he was like, all right, don't play on them people's job. Don't do none of that. You yeah. need to get what you need to get. And, you know, it, it struck to me where I was like, all right, I can't just be here and waste my opportunity. Yeah. It should be to the point. So, you know. After it really struck me after my first year, I lost some of my scholarship because I was BSing around. You know, first God, year was like, yeah. I, you can live it up. I lost my scholarship and, and um not I didn't lose my scholarship. I lost like, you know, one of the academics because I got like a 2.9. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like borderline. And then I it ended up I had to pay like thirty five hundred dollars out of pocket. Okay. And you know that everybody went to summer session and I said, nah, I said, I made this mistake. Let me get right. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom, dudes and dad was like, you know, you, you know, you went to school for free. So I was working three jobs that summer. Yeah, you were. I was like, you were. I was like, dang, I'm, I'm stacking up. I made the $3,500. And then when I got, get ready to, um, I was getting ready to pay it for the semester for the year. Yeah. My pops came up and he was like, nah, 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 nah. You keep, you keep about, Twenty five hundred of that. Yeah. I'll take care of it, and then you know you that's, pay that one. So you know all that hard work. He didn't say anything until the end. Yeah, you know, that was kind of a motivation. I was more like a you know, dang, I don't want to be no burden on you. You yeah. know, I made that mistake. Right. You know why? Why he got to do? It. You know, he worked hard. I got other siblings. Yeah. You know, so that really hit me hard. Where I was like, dang, 
you know, they they believe in me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They want the best for me. So, you know, I was like, that really was like, all right, A.B., I got to get right. Yeah. And get on the track. So you came back with a vengeance that uh that next year went and playing about them books. So I mean that's hard for you know for pops to even you know look at him look at his son and be like, all right, you know he he working hard. Let me let me help him out. And you can kept you some change. So like that's something you'll never forget. You know what I'm saying? And so uh that that's dope. So now moving forward, you know, we, we got to, went through college, right? We found our major that we wanted to really be a part of. Uh, you know, uh we figured out something, you know, a tax accountant. With tax accounting, I know you, we, we taught when you first started graduating. How hard was it to find a, a, a job as a, you know, as a tax accountant? And then how, how do you continuously move the needle to move forward to CPA? Like what certifications do you need? Like teach people the game. How can they make more money in, a, in the tax accounting profession? Like what do they need? So give us the scoop. So to answer your first question about how did I get about uh, what I need to do to get there. So it was about senior year. They were pushing about, hey, you need to grab an internship. And, yep. You know, I'm I'm like, all right, I already hit up all these conferences. I'm like volunteering for these events. I'm shaking hands. And, you know, the the what is it? The intern guy who helps you get internships. I was hitting them up every day. I said, yo, whenever you got an opening, let me know. I, I got my resume ready. I already got it sharp. Got it. And then everybody in the class was getting it. I mean, I got interviewed for a few times and, you know, I hit them with the, you know, I'm an athlete. I'm trying to balance this out because they want to see what you do. Yeah, you got to sell it. Time. Yeah, you got to sell it. It's really like interviews. You got to pitch the best version of yourself. You got it. They don't care about your technical skills because that's what they can teach you on the job. So it's really, could he fit in this culture? And I'm like, all right, you know, I'm hitting up interviews and then I'm like, all right, I'm waiting for certain interviews. They come back and then I hear, you know, classmates in the back like, yo, I got this interview at XYZ. And I'm like, dang, I applied to that spot. I ain't even hear back from them yet. So, you know, I'm you got I was hitting it hard and it got to the point where, you know, I just saw one on um like I think it was on like Indeed. Yeah. Intern downtown internship mm -hmm. um at a corporate company. I'm like, bet, let me put this in. I get to the interview, fresh, sharp, suit on, and I mean, it's the coolest lady who's the accounting manager. You know, I'm just being real. Yeah. I was like, you know, I enjoy to play basketball on, on my free time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she loved that because yeah. we, I ended up getting an internship there, and that was my first first spot I got into. That's dope. And it got to the point where, you know, we, I was in my senior career, senior, yeah. and I was redshirted, so I had another year to play. So I was I was set up two different ways. I had an internship, and you know I would balance it off. I'm working out in the morning, yeah, and I'll hit my internship in half of the day. And I'm yeah. like, I right, still doing football. You know, we coming off our best season yet. Um, but uh, we I, I'm at this internship, and it comes to the point where I did such a good job. They asked me to stay on mm. full time, and that was a decision where you know either get your MBA. Or paid for by playing football another year. Right. Or work a full time job making real salary. Yeah. So that was a tough decision. I remember this decision. I, yeah. yeah. I, I even went to the. I went to my job and I said, you know, hey, could I could I work? Um, I could do the online classes and I could do football, and then you know I could work for you guys. And you know they really just she just laughed in my face. She was like, huh, you gonna play football? Like you know they ain't got. <laughs> and I didn't do the work. And, you know, it was times where we would have punishment runs because, you know, somebody missed breakfast check. Yep. <laughs> you know, I'm doing up, down, in the morning. I'm like, bro, what am I doing, man? I'm tired of this. Why am I running for John Smith? You know? running for <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah, I'm running for baby. <laughs> for breakfast check? But come on now. So what is this? Yeah. I mean, I loved everything with football, but it got to the point where I was like, you know, I might need to move on with my career. Right. You know, at that point, um, I was full time there, and then one thing about my manager was she was a CPA. Okay. Now in the accounting world, a CPA, like I said from the beginning, is one of the highest uh, professional um, license to have. I mean, it's kind of essential. Like you ain't gonna buy real estate without somebody from a real estate like with a, without a real estate license. Right. You know, it's such a thing. I mean, such as like a barber. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody can cut hair great, right? But don't have their barber license. But, you know, from somebody you never met, 
you would probably want somebody with a barber license. You know what I mean? Yeah, they certify. So it's the same thing in the accounting world. I mean, you can be an accountant, but you just don't have your CPA, which means you can't sign things. You can't go out and present, hey, certain um, information. You can't issue out certain financial statements. So in the accounting world, you need over 150 account credit hours okay. to apply for the CPA exam. So that's essentially... You need another level of education outside of your bachelor's because most bachelor programs give you like 125, 130. Gotcha. So in that case, most accountants usually go get an MSA, which is a master's in accountancy, okay. which is a program about a year, year and a half, which strictly focuses on the CPA exam, really. Gotcha. So, you know, most people usually do that program right after their undergrad. Mm -hmm. Do Basically, the whole curriculum is studying for the exam. They take the exam by the boom, by the baby time. Yeah. Um, or you can go the other route where you can take, you know, little community classes or whatever to get that 150. Me, I decided to just go get my MBA because I didn't know if I wanted to do the whole accounting thing. I think that would be a, a great addition to being an accountant, you know, if I wanted to venture out into yeah. another specific item. Um, but the CPA exam is a four-part exam where you have audit, uh, for uh, regulation and business and economics. So that, that's different parts every accountant should have to, you know, keep up with the different accounting standards. Wow. Now, the thing about the CPA is it's a very difficult exam. I mean, it takes a lot of patience and studying. I'm on two parts already down. Mm -hmm. I have two more to go. Um, it's an 18-month window. Got it. You pass one, you got 18 months to get all of them done. If not, you lose that first one. What? So, it, yes. So it's like, listen, you can procrastinate all you want. You're going to end up taking that test over again. Right. It's a very tough test where you got to spend your time and focus on a lot of different things. Yeah. Um, the tough part is the studying when you're working, you know. Yeah. Actually, yeah. You get out of school and you really get out of that focus of studying. So a lot of people try to knock it out once you uh, get out of school while like you're still in that motion. Yeah. Um, you know, that's one of the certifications. There's multiple different accounting certifications, but you know for a fact if you get the CPA, you're pretty good with that. How much time how much time you put in the study? Bro, it gotta be about thirty, maybe twenty-five to thirty hours a week. That's the recommended. Really? That's the recommended. So imagine, you know, coming from work a long day, or looking at numbers and typing on a computer, right. and then coming home and reading about numbers. It takes real discipline to do that. Yeah. But, you know, on me, you know, I had a lot of things going on. You know, I procrastinated a little bit. You know, I was like, all right, one of my goals for the year was come out with a CPA license. And I'm not too out already. So that's good. good. So then, okay, so see, we got different levels of uh, CPA. So obviously, you got you got your bachelor's, then you got your MBA. MBA was more of a, 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 a more of a broader safety net, meaning if you didn't want to stick with accounting, you have something else that you can fall on as far as like that can get you into, you know, maybe different doors outside of just accounting and you know things of that nature. So that's that's pretty dope. Um, a good idea that some people should think about. And then you talked about MSA going. Um, it's like a you said like a year and a half, two years. To yeah, get got you to get that, and that's strictly focused on the CPA exam, and so you know you got options. Now, what I will ask with these classes and with the with the classes and everything, you got to pay for the test. Are these you know you pay for these on yes. your own? Now, that's the thing is, and that's another thing about it. You got eighteen months to pass it, and it's about close to two fifty a test. Okay. So you can't play around with the test. But most employers pay for yours. Like my company, they pay. And you got to buy the review guy, okay. which is about $1,500. The review guy? guy? For the review guy. And $1,500 to $2,000 oh for the God. review guy. Per each test or just that's for so all of them? It's one, yeah, the review guy. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. So it's about $2,000. But most employers pay for that for you. So like my company... You know, they do a really good job of pouring in and want you to move up. Okay. So, you know, they take care of all that and they let you take the test twice. They pay for it twice. Okay. Until you can take the test. So if I fail it once, you know, I get a freebie. Second one, I get a freebie. If I'm taking that section three times, it's like, all right, bro, 
It's all paid for you. Now it's time to get right. Yeah. Maybe you need a little more motor. <laughs> you might need a little more motivation to spending your own money. Yeah. Golly, that's crazy. Okay, so cool. So you got to pay for your own money. Now, did you, along the journey, did you get any certifications uh, for yourself? Did you, did you get uh, any certifications just for you personally that maybe your job might have paid for, but or maybe just something that you wanted to get? Did you, did you do anything like that? No, I did not. But, you know, I'm, I'm slowly wanting to do something with, you know, data and IT. So that's one of the coding things I want to kind of, that's on my uh, big board where I'm trying to, you know, once I take care of the CPA, I want to learn more about the coding and stuff. Yeah. You know, that's interesting to me. Yeah. Everybody want to get in that tech, man. That's where it's going. Yeah, gotta, that's where it's evolution, maybe. That's where the it's tech going. Room. You got to get into that metaverse. I don't know nothing about it, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that's, that's cool, man. Um, we talked about certification. Now, with coming out of college, um, you don't have to tell us exactly, you know, give us the range of, if, if you just come out of college with a bachelor's, what's the range for, you know, a tax account and what should people be looking forward to? Because I think people, you know, if, without the transparency, sometimes somebody can go into a job and they can feel like, oh, this is good enough. You know what I'm saying? But really, they getting sold so short. So what's the range? You know, you don't have to, like I said, you don't have to give us your exact numbers. Just give us the range of coming out of college, what can a tax accountant look to make? And then once you gain your CPA, how, how does that number change and where does that range jump to? All right. So starting off, like like I said, there's different type of accounts. Okay. But mostly I'm in public accounting. And usually that range, you know, it updates each year based on inflation and, you know, how the whole market is. But mm -hmm. now coming out, you're looking at this fresh start entry. You're looking about 45 to 50 for an entry guy. Okay. Now, I remember coming out of college and I was like, you know, maybe entry guy like 40 to 45. But yeah. now it's coming up to like 40 to 55. Gotcha. Uh, 45 to 55 in different markets and areas. But in South Carolina, you're looking around 50, maybe 48 okay. for a starting position. Um, once you get your CPA, usually, I mean, starting off with a CPA and still, the CPA usually adds like an extra $5,000. Most places give an extra bonus. Okay. Depending on your level. Because, you know, you have the staff accountant at a certain level, then you have a senior accountant. So okay. usually in order to go to senior, you need your CPA. Got it. So in that terms... You might go from positions in there, jump from, like I said, the staff without a CPA is from the 45 to 55, but a CPA, the senior, is about 65 to 75 or 80. Then you go up to a manager, or if you're in a different corporation, you can get up to 80 to 90 okay. based on level of experience. So that's like seven, eight years, 10 years experience. You should be making about 75 the 80 top dollar. What's the best markets to really to really be in? You know, when you look at, let's just say you look at your career, do you see yourself being in South Carolina for the long haul? Do you see yourself moving maybe to a different market to, you know, gain more opportunity? How, what, what, is your, what is your mindset on that? So let me tell you more about what a public accountant, everybody needs an accountant, you know, tax accountant, everybody got taxes. Taxes is one thing you can't avoid. So for people that want to get in a career, there's always going to be need for account. Mm -hmm. I can say you can come out of college and possibly find a job in accountancy pretty easy because it's the demand of, oh, we always want to train new young people. Yeah. I mean, we have interns in all the time. But in public accounting, you know, the old school tradition is tax season. Like we're picking up. That's when yeah. you nail out about 60 to 70 hours. Yeah. Depending on where you at, you like crunch it. I mean, yeah, you work, you work all day. <laughs> yeah, basically, Jan January twenty seventh through April eighteenth, you might as well cancel your plans because you you work, <laughs> and that's not too appealing to the younger market, and especially you know millennials, and you know we want to we want to balance our time. You know what I mean? But you know, it's this very old school. Some places have different rules. It's very old school where it's like you're working that big period of time. Right. So you're gonna get that anywhere you go, basically. You know, but that's in the public accounting field. Okay. So the corporate accounting field, you know, you you're focused on one company books. You know, 
You know, you don't have different tax returns yeah, yeah, yeah. coming in. You're just basically making sure financials are in order. And with that, it's year round balance. Got it. Okay. So for me, you know, I think this is a great stepping point. Most of the time, you know, those bigger opportunities require on the in, um, on the application on the um, job posting. Hey, public accounting experience or a big four experience. So for me, I don't know how much I can do more of these 40 hour weeks, these 40 plus hour weeks. Cause you know, I'm trying to do stuff, you know, I'll be getting invited to go out and I'm like, bro, I can't, how you got to work, you know, but I mean, you know, it, it makes great money. I'm learning a lot. It's a great experience, but you know, I see myself being kind of a, probably getting in a smaller business, family business type deal. Yeah. Kind of being the head accounting guy of that, you know, something where, you know, I can scale and make sure everything's okay. And, you know, still have a work life balance, you know, or I can see myself getting with a, you know, big time corporation and, you know, working my way up the corporate ladder that on that end. Yeah. So really it's either public accounting or, you know, get out and do your own thing or make sure you, yeah. So ultimately my goal is kind of like long term. You know, when I start a family, I probably want to hop on. You know, example, you start your own business and you get pretty big. Yeah. You know, I, I run the whole show for you, you yeah. know, and just let you know. Yeah. I was just about to say that. I was like, if we can get this thing cracking about 100,000, 150 views, that's big money. I was like, yeah, I need you. I mean, hey, I this need is the market. I mean, you see what happened on TikTok? Them guys making $100,000 easy. Yeah. So it's just like, man, it's opportunity out there, man. It's just you plugging yourself with the right people, staying connected. And, and maybe it's not even me. It could be you got Mike starting an Airbnb. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like what they got going on over there, they gonna, they might need some uh, uh, guidance or assistance just to make sure everything's running properly. So it, it, it I mean, it, it never, like the, the power of network is crazy just because you, you never bro, know. It's about who you know, bro. Yeah. I get, and like I said, all the homies hit me up every time. Yo, yo, yo. I had um old buddy, I didn't even gonna say his name, but he yeah. called me the other day and was like, uh, you know, I got, I got some more people. I got some clients on my own. Um, start working with and they willing to pay whatever yeah how do i handle that on my taxes you know and i get calls yo my my grandma need help with her taxes what i'm supposed to do you know but you know it, it's always cool being the guy that you know know and can help out you yeah know? so that, that's pretty awesome that's good man that's good so was it for you was it all about money going into this career or was it just more or less i want to do something that I feel like I'm good at or i, I you know i i enjoy i know you say the 40 hour weeks you know 40 50 hour weeks through january to april they kind of add up it's, it's taxing but it was it was choosing this profession was it strictly about money you know would you tell somebody like hey like if you don't like this if you don't like that i wouldn't think about doing it you know being a tax accountant like what was your mindset you know? really you know at first I, I thought it was about money. it was mm -hmm. you know what could i do real quick have a stable career, you know, and make money. But, you know, as I grew older and realized, you know, work isn't everything, you know, you can make money all different type of ways. Yeah. I think now it's more about just balance. Yeah. Uh, Work-life balance, you know. Uh, I, I mean, no, yeah, it's, it's basically work-life balance. Yeah, right that's important. I mean, 2020 taught everybody a lot. It taught you, one, you don't have to go into an office to work. Two, having mental stability and mental peace is key for you go crazy. So, and, and it just shows you that I think 2020 showed us that these, a lot of companies were overworking people, right? They were, they were putting a lot on people, you know, a lot of stressful situations. And for the longest we were doing it, but then once you get a taste of, oh, I can, you know, work from home and be able to travel or I can, you know, do this. And you know what I'm saying? Like just it broadens. like once you expose people to certain things, it's hard to go back to the un the unseen or the unknown exposure leads to expansion. So if I'm exposed to I can get more time um, and more uh, more balance, as you would put it, and still be able to do my job, then that's what I want. And that's what I'm going after. And so I think for the new for the Gen Z crowd, coming in like those guys are heavily a, a lot of them are heavy entrepreneurs uh they're all about balance like they, they're saying our generation we will quit jobs like it's yeah. nothing because it's not working to our balance and and, and and companies just gonna have to i feel like companies are going to have to adjust at some point you can't stay in the old mindset of like no come to work do this we control you 
that, that right. So it ain't. It, it's not. I even had um kind of to piggyback on your question. I, I got two little cousins, twin cousins. That's an accountant too. Yeah. You no, know, auntie was like, "Yo, holla at them." You know, I told them everything what they needed to know. Like, you know, this is. But the thing about accounting, there's different little fields that you know you can do in it. Yeah. Like, right. to tell you more, I was telling them, you know, it ain't strictly just the accounting where the taxes. You know, I said that litigation and forensic. It's a little cool little thing that I do sometimes. The forensic is like you know, digging in the dirt, figuring out what happened. You know, yeah. I I had to present in front of the firm you know i'm kind of the jokey guy yeah and you know, kind of what's your niche and you know i was like you know we do forensic and litigation type like that i said basically i'm an undercover spy yeah you know? Like, <laughs> you know, we had a one time we had a I, I remember i first got on when i first started they gave me this case mm -hmm. uh a cardiologist he had his own practice and you know when you're a doctor you, you own your own place you focus on your craft yeah. That's why it's really important to know who your accountant is or who you trust with your books. Right. I mean, this guy, his his controller, which is, you know, the key guy in the thing, mm -hmm. his best friend was stealing money from me. It took, bro, I had a whole box of receipts and documents. And my job was to go in and figure out what he was spending that money, bro. Oh my Ended God. up finding, he stole about $2.5 million from this guy over seven years. <laughs> His 2.5 million, friend. your best friend? But one thing we learned, one thing my boss told me is, you know, you're going to find out in the forensics and litigation type thing, it's going to be your mama, brother, sister, cousin, they're going to steal. It's crazy. You wouldn't believe it, but you surprised what we work with, bro. I mean, he had, he was paying for this girl tuition. He bought his daughter a car. He had a separate credit card. Oh, wow. It was crazy how we broke all that different down. So, like, when I pitched that to other people, they like, whoa, that, that's that's mad interesting. Heck yeah, it is. I mean, you know, yeah. you know, you know <laughs> taxes is like, hold on. I don't want to just punch numbers all day, but, you know, I wanna when you start game. digging in that dirt, you like, hold on. What? His cousin? Yeah, it's like, hold on. It's like, hold on. A car payment? <laughs> they don't got no car there? With Lexus? <laughs> Are you, um... Uh, the other side where you know we do business valuations, yeah. When I present it, is like, all right, somebody might come in and be like, Yo, I had this family business for 10, maybe 20 plus years. Tell me what I can sell it for. And you know, we basically gather all the numbers, all the industry data, and be like, Listen, man, at most you can get about five million off this thing. Okay. And you know, we work with them on the specific deals, you know, right. to see what they can do. So we had over a hundred million dollar deal the other day. Wow. So I thought that was pretty cool with you that. So that's more what kind of I do outside of the taxes, which yeah. a lot of people are like, okay, that might be interesting. Yeah, I like the litigation and forensics. I feel like if I was to ever try to do something like that, yeah. I'm, I'm digging deep. I need to yeah, go you, who's still. You be like, hold on, what? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I see what y'all are doing. Yeah, but so that's pretty good. That's cool. cool, man. So let's. I'm. I'm. I'm we're gonna round it out, right? We we coming to the to tail end of the uh, kind of the conversation, but just tell. Give me some things of um, things you don't like about accounting, um, because obviously, you know, we talked about some of the good parts, and you know, obviously, you, you know, we can make good money. We know um, it's a it's a in demand uh, career, but you know, for people that you know, you got your internship internship at the end, right? Again. I'm starting to believe that there should be processes in place or programs in place for kids coming out of high school to not automatically commit to college. I feel like we should have a program where we can provide local internships or, or local like you're you know you remember i don't know if you guys had it but we had this school called is atc and people you could go to the school and you could do welding uh, cosmetology yeah. and high schools, yeah, like a trade school. And I feel like for people coming out of high school, it, there should be some type of free or low cost trade school that they can go to and take a few classes of, let's say you pick three things that you really th really think you want to do. And you take two classes here, two classes here, two classes here, so you can get the nitty gritty of what that's all about. If you like the nitty gritty, you feel like you can deal with it, then pursue that career and go to school and major in that. That way you're not wasting your time, you're not wasting your money. Because at the end of the day, I think schooling, 
I'm, I, school is necessary, but I also think it's a it's a business. So they're going to try to mon they're, they're going to monetize it the best it, way they it, can. It definitely is a business, and they get you with the guys who are indecisive. Right. That's where we get the guys. Like, all right, the guys plus four years, they already made the money. They yeah. <laughs> they don't want the guys who come in and be like, listen, this is what I need to do. Because in reality, you can get it done in less than four, four years. years. They want you to have that, and they, they get you sometimes. I know prerequisites are okay, but they get you with those. Yes. It really takes two years of nailing down of your major. Some people need additional writing. Some right. people need math. You know, it's, it's certain things you need. But the, it really takes about less than three years. And I agree with you on that. Some schools, high schools, need to start implementing these basic business classes. Um, these trade schools should be pushed heavy. Because yeah. not everybody's a college student. Right. Um, but the real thing is like, you know, you, you know what you want to do. You can really pick the courses because it was times I was in the, the meeting. Really, they don't want you to say anything. They want you to be like, what you got? Let's get your class. You really got to make your advisor work. Yeah. Because I sat there and I caught on the game. I'm like, well, I'm taking, you know, uh, physics too. And I already took two general. She's like, yeah, we just need to fill this. This is the best thing on your schedule. I said, no. I said, I need to take this accounting class, this accounting class. I'm like, you just here to fill fill the schedule. I yeah. said, I ain't like I said, I ain't like everybody else who like, yo, coach said I need to be done at 3 30. Right. And and you gotta learn that balance too, especially wherever you at. I we didn't play on the big time level, you right. know. But we were at a point, like I said, I knew I was like, all right, I know I'm here just for school. I'm a ball out. But I'm gonna take the best out of it, mm -hmm. Coach. I gotta take this lab at three thirty. We got practice at. I got film at three fifteen. I who gonna fight? I mean, I gotta take this class. <laughs> I ain't gonna you, gonna make it. <laughs> yeah, you know, you gonna pay my extra fifteen thousand if I gotta come another year. So I'll be at film at three forty five. Yeah. you know what I mean. And it it worked. Yeah. it's just to the point where you vocal, and they they'll sit right there and prolong you, and you'll be like, ah. Oh, you get to somebody new, they'll be like, yo, why, why'd you take all these classes? All you needed to do was this. Bro, you just spit yeah. so much game right there, bro. Like, Nah, yeah. you really got to take advantage. Use your resource. I really, and mentors are becoming a big thing now. Yeah. You know, mentor programs, nonprofits are helping out with that. But really, you know, use all your resources for the new guys coming into school. Yeah, ball, let ball take you where you need to take it, you know? Mm -hmm. You want to go have a football dream? Go ahead, but take advantage of your resources there. If you want to play football uh, to the next level, do your thing, but get your degree while you're doing it. Yeah, because you always need something to back up on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I agree with you, man. You get if you come in with that mindset, all right, I'm ready to be an accountant. Maybe you can take that jump to even in high school. All right, let me just. Some people you don't know how much cold calling I did to get my first internship before you. <laughs> I, I didn't. I probably told you the sequence wrong, but I, it was one time I called every single accounting firm and said, "Hey, I don't even need to uh, get paid. I just need to be in the building." Right. Yeah. It was this little small practice around the corner where it was like, "I bet I, you know I ain't never had anybody say that." Right. I was in there, you know, filing papers, and you know, luckily those guys were like, "Listen, let me just sure. show you how to get this done." Yeah. You know, but it, it take work. I mean, some people got the connections. I would say me and you, I, I didn't have the connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know anybody from Greenville. No. I had to start cold calling. I was like, listen, let me get in the building. All I got to do, whatever you need me to do, I need to learn myself. Right. So like you said, if you get that head start out of high school, you can learn, all right, I don't have to wait till the fourth year to do an internship. Right. You know, it, it says it on your curriculum, you need to take it your senior year, but you can take it any other year. Yeah, man, that's crazy. Cause that you said that is like, and I talk and, and I watch a lot of different podcasts. Really, it'd be a lot of sports podcasts, and and a lot of the guys that play sports and they have these agents, right, or these accountants or these people that manage their pretty much their agents that manage all their contracts and their money, right. And the thing that the that we would say the OGs or the people that you know have played the game for a long time and retired is that your agent works for you. You don't work for the agent, so you need to go to the agent and say, look, this is what I need to get done. This is what I'm trying to do, and you should make that happen. Same way with advisors in college. When you said, because I remember me sitting at my advisor, and I'm like, 
I don't know what to take. I'm just like, I just need to graduate. I need the classes that's going to make me graduate. But I probably could have graduated sooner. Let's just say, three, you know, three years, three and a half years, I could have graduated versus a full four, a four and a half. I can't even remember what I did because, you know, I did RTC for a little bit. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know what I'm saying? But it was just like, I didn't know. You you knew so like this is something where you know I'm a, you know if somebody's listening like look when you get to school your advisor works to you and you need to sit down and say what classes do I have to have to graduate mm -hmm. don't give me these bowling uh, <laughs> bowling theater <laughs> arts I, don't give me that let me give me what I need to graduate because I want to take those and and maybe I'll add some fluff because you, if you're an athlete you don't want to put so you don't want to slam yourself because it does get hectic unless you just built like that. But, man, what you said was crazy because I'm like, I literally went to my advisor and was like, what you think? What's next? I need this. And he had like a checklist of what I need, like what you needed. So I'll be like, okay, I haven't took this and that. And I think my advisor was good. Like Tim Nyhart, I'll tell you, he was a, a top-notch advisor. But I will say on my part, I didn't know. If I would have known, I probably could have been a little bit more precise on what I wanted to take. And it seems like you knew what you wanted to take and what you needed and you caught on quick. And a lot of these guys just go in here and be like, yeah, that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I'm like just bro, here. why are you taking skiing P number two? Golf bro, three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you a senior, bro. What you doing? You didn't even take the basic. Because it was times you would, you would catch some seniors in the basic freshman class. I'm like, come on, man. Bro, yeah. I seen, we seen a lot of uh, <laughs> super seniors. So <laughs> it, it's crazy, man. But. It wasn't, I don't think the super seniors that we saw, it wasn't due to academics. I think a lot of it was injuries and stuff like that. But still, yeah. you got to you gotta uh, be mindful. And so, um, I'm trying to think. Last question is, what's the best, I think you already hit this question. I was going to say, what's the best advice you could give to someone um, about finding their career path? So, no, you didn't, you didn't find this one. What, what's, what's the best advice you can give someone to help them find their career path that they, you know, maybe it's not accounting, but, you know, how, how does someone find what they're good at, find their niche, and, you know, what makes them, you know, continuously get up in the morning and, and go to work? Because that's, that's what it's really all about. One thing my wife always tells me is, you know, do what you love. Yeah. Like, she gets up, and there's sometimes, I mean, I love doing accounting. So, I mean, sometimes. Yeah. But my wife loves what she does. Like, it's not a dull day to her. Yeah. Find something you truly are passionate about. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I know Maya loves social media stuff. Yeah. Like, I mean, she gave me game one time. Yeah. She was like, yo, you got to post. You got to post this right here. You got to make sure your audience speed is right. <laughs> and, you know, she created her own little thing. Shout out to Naya. But yeah. uh, she she created her own little uh, social media. She's doing social media. That's yeah. what she loves. Yeah. I mean, do what you love. Like, figure out what's your passion. And you might not catch on first, but, like, kind of look at those old stories where you had. Like, when I presented, all right, I made sure the whole squad was good. Or, like, all right, we got this amount of money. Yeah. But you can't do this. Stop. You need to. I used to be like, all right. I'm killing, I need to make $5,000 for the summer. Mm -hmm. I don't got any bills at school, but I need to be able to take summer out, my wife out, like three or four times a nice restaurant. Yeah. So, you know, I, I was always budgeting, thinking about certain things like that. Um, just find that niche, man. If you yeah. figure out that niche and you find something you love, figure out what, what it connects with, you know? Right. Um, Look at your all the uh, majors and that time range. Like you said, we, we mentioned earlier, figure out what you want to do. But I would say let that freshman year be that year you kind of figure out what's out there. Yeah. Go to certain events. Be adventurous. You know, go to that introductory meeting or go to that conference. Yeah. And, you know, it could, it could be as simple as, you know, going to somebody and hearing somebody speak. And yeah. you're like, oh, man, this this is it. Uh, this guy seems like he, he's on the right track. I might need to follow. For sure. I, I would say just be adventurous with it, man. Yeah. Just do what you love. That's for sure. Like, man, I tell people, man, don't be scared to fail, man. Like, people get yeah. this people get this notion that they got to be perfect or, you know, people going to look at them a certain way if they don't get it the first time. And I look at myself, I was like, man, I've, I've done so many different things. I've started 
I've enjoyed it, got it to a certain level, and then I just fall off. You know what I'm saying? But I will say, don't get in the habit of trying stuff and then leaving it, right? But do try it. If, if you're just trying to figure out what you like, definitely try a lot of different uh, try a lot of different things fail and it's okay like you just just to be like hey i didn't like it it was this i didn't like this about it and so i went a different route and that is okay you're not a failure um nothing's wrong with you people do it all the time at 27 26 i've let things go that i was like all right cool and you know I'm, and we resonate with sports and we always know like don't quit don't quit no don't but, quit but it's okay to quit Especially uh -huh. if it got your, you know, if it's more or less like with your your mental, because a lot of things are will affect you mentally, like draining to get up, you know, like I, I really can't, I hate doing this, you know what I'm saying? Well, you need to find something to hold you over until you can figure out what you really want to do. And I, and that's all I say is don't, um, don't be scared to fail and it's okay to fail and really figure out what you want to do. What's, I, I had a question. What was those classes uh, NG you made us take? That was like you gotta go new, to uh, New Testament and Old Testament. Yeah, so New Testament. But what's the events we used to go to? We used to have to dress oh, up. Cultural, cultural events. <laughs> that wasted two years of my time. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Um, chapel. Chapel, chapel was great too, bro. Cultural New Testament, Old Testament, cultural events, and chapel. Yeah, Our you had to drive out of those. Take. Those really, those really would have messed up your GPA, bro. Bro. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was like, bro, we need to, y'all need to cut this out. Like, but it, I mean, that's the school you signed up for, right? So again, just pay attention. Um, yeah, and, go to the school. Like, I'm, like I said, I mean, just understand where you go to. And I agree with you, man. Don't be afraid to fail, man. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing. And also, don't <laughs> do not look at these people on social media and be like, yo, yeah. I need to be. I met a lot of people that are just like, Hey, I'm not on the right track because such and such working at this certain job. And Bro. I can say that and it's hard because I didn't experience it, but I mean, that's a big thing in this day and age where it's yes. like, all right, social media is so big to the point where they see somebody else celebrating a promotion mm -hmm. and one mm -hmm. person might not get their job. It, everybody got, God got a plan, man. Everybody got their own time. Yeah. You can look at somebody quick and be like, dang, you take for granted what you got at home. You know, I'm living, I'm blessed. I got a wife, you know, you might be like, dang, this man going to everything. Nah, they, they had their hardships too. Yeah. But, um, or you don't know what they yeah. did to get there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you don't, don't know. know. Something could be they catching, like something could be catching up on them. You know what I'm saying? Like, Correct. oh, they got, you know, they living like this now, but if it was elite, you know what I'm saying? Like if it wasn't the right way, it could catch back up and bite you. And then now you're going to be like, oh, I'm glad I didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like take your yeah, time. You, like you, you said, even when you're early, you know, I listen to all your podcasts. I'll be at work listening. Even when you you had me at that point where, you know, whenever you get a new position, I always try to, all, all the homies, I give them a call and be like, man, that's what's up. I'm proud of you. Yeah. You know, everything, you know, I call all of them. But, you know, I, all I thought of was like, yo, Big P got this new position, big time, Houston. But when you presented, you know, the truth, nobody was there with me when I got uh, denied seven, eight times. You know yeah. what I mean? You didn't see that. You just saw that. And it could have easily been like, dang, my mom got this position. You know, I ain't doing nothing. You know, but you, you didn't know how hard you had to work. Yeah, it's crazy. And then the uh, crazy thing about it is I, I, I want it. And this, and this is another lesson, right? You want something so bad and you think it's, it looks good, right? It's shiny. But then when you get into it, it's not what it's all cracked up to be. So like now, like, don't get me wrong. I love, I like what I do. But it's also now I'm starting to figure out like okay, well what what I signed up for because I want to be serious with the podcast and really you know see this through is like now it's kind of like I don't know it's demanding like I gotta make it happen at work and then I'm also I'm, it's like I'm burning the candle at both ends pretty much right mm -hmm. and I and I will say when you're going for different promotions talk to the people that's that's in the promotion and take and take their word for face value right because i used to hear people like oh this position like what i heard was calling they were like well this is it's, it's different it's harder you know it's different ever since the pandemic and i was just like man i'm gonna work a, i'm a workaholic i if it's i can make it happen you know what i'm saying i'm not really putting myself but there's things that they said that i should have paid attention to and i was like okay maybe it, it maybe it would have made me rethink what i was doing but i'm grateful for where i'm where i am and i understand that every 
And I'm pretty sure you feel the same way. Everything, even though it, it's not what you thought it would be, there's a lesson to be learned, right? And I think the lesson for me is all money ain't good money. Yeah. All money ain't good money. So, like, I, I got, you know, I'm making good money, but is it worth the, you know, the, the, the stress or the, you know, the time and the back end work? Like, all, I, had, I didn't even think about that. So now it's like, okay, my next thing, I'm thinking about that. And it's like, I'm going to make the best decision for me. And I think that's another thing that people got to really, really focus in on. Like you said, social media will make you think that you need this, this, and this. But you really don't, man. And especially if you discipline um, with, with, with money. Um, if you discipline and just understanding yourself and knowing that you don't have to like me, per okay. Look, I'm gonna tell you. I like the, I like clothing. I like to, you know, look a certain way. When people see me, they probably like, dang, this. you know what I'm saying? Like that's just me. I like to dress up. Yeah. But I'm gonna tell you, I don't spend thousands of dollars like on no Gucci, Louis. Yeah. I'm gonna give you the cheat code, Fashion Nova. I get pants. You know what I'm saying? I, for the big guys, like, I'm on the Nova. So it's like I'm getting clothes like I shop like how girls shop. You know how we always talk about, man, girls clothes so cheap. I understood that if I could find something that I could dress up and look good in, I can look like I got on Louis Gucci, but I ain't spend Louis Gucci money. So it's like, and that's another thing, like, and I, and I want to tell people that because they may look at me and be like, oh, Peanut Flossing, you know, he got this, that. I really only spent $5 for the shirt. I really only spent... I need to check out $20, you know what I'm saying? I only spent $20 on the pants. So it's like, I feel comfortable in who I am, though. I understand that I make I make the aura that people, you know, you know what I'm saying? You make the aura. The clothes or the, you know, the designer doesn't make you. You make it. So I can put on, I can put on a JCPenney, you know, pants and whatever, and I can make it look good, and they're going to think it's something else. But it's just me. Yeah. It's me confident in who I am. Just like I know you're confident in who you are. You're not, Blair's not going to do something out of the ordinary. You'd be like, I mean, he might surprise you here and there, but for the most part, Blair's going to be like, this is me. You know what I'm saying? This is what I do. I ain't changing just because somebody else doing X, Y, and Z, you know? Yeah, you hit that. You hit that on the nail on the couch, bro. I, I, I yeah. like that. Yeah. But last last thing, bro. We need a recommendation. We, we we hit the end of the conversation. I think it was a great conversation. I enjoyed talking to you. Um, I think we, we got I think us as I ain't gonna say I say as men, right? We need to start having more conversations like this. I feel like it's it's healthy for us. Like just to understand that men all go through the same issues, you know what I'm saying? All the same problems, the stuff that we scared to, you know, not scared, but just don't want to admit to, or just, you know, at times you feel like, man, I got a, a family now. I gotta take care of them. Like what happens if something something falls off? You just gotta I'm big on that, bro. I'm I'm really working on trying to develop those brotherly relationships. Yeah. Even with, you know, if you get guys here in the, the Met, you know, yeah. I try to, it's, it's, it's one of those things as an adult, it's kind of weird to make adult friends, you know what yeah. I'm saying, like, how do you go about it, it's like, you know, when we were younger, it, it seemed weird, it's kind of like walking up to a girl back in the day and trying to introduce yourself, yeah. but it's, it's kind of weird like that, like, hey bro, what's up, you were, <laughs> but, you know, I, I'm really trying to uh, develop that, and you know, even with you guys, I try to reach out, and you know, in the call with, I love you guys, you know, yeah. Everything, hope everything going for you guys um, well. But, you know, I agree with that. You know, we need to are go on a brotherly trip. You know what I mean? Yeah. It don't got to be nothing fancy, but, you know, just something, something you know, relax. bird our time to, you know? Yeah. But uh, that recommendation? Yeah. Somebody know, somebody dope. I need somebody somebody that I don't have to know them. I can know them, but I just need somebody I need to sit down with that'll be, you know, that has something to add to the podcast or what we're trying to do here and just... Well, you know that's going to create a lot of value. Man, I got, if you remember, my man, I hit him up, actually, because, you okay. know, I remember you, you had me, let me know this. His name is Brandon Williams. Brandon Williams. He was at NGU, and he's currently a PhD in engineering. Remember the only brother who was doing engineering? Brandon. He was a tall, light-skinned basketball guy. He was just I, always walking around. I think camp. so. I gotta, I gotta see his face. I, I think yeah, so. You gotta yeah. see his face. Currently, my man is getting his uh, PhD in engineering, and he's been doing all the tech stuff yeah. with, um, you know, the engineering. He's been teaching some classes on the side. He's been working with some cars. Yeah, I mean, I think that man would probably add some 
And I, I want to listen to him to hear his story a little yeah. deeper. You know, from an engineer. I don't know if you had an engineer mindset on here, yeah. but he was the one who went through, he got through the cow too. And I remember he would be posting, you know, like problems with A, with D and yeah. X on there. Yeah. Like, oh, I, I don't even know, but nah, that, I already reached out to him actually. Okay. You know, he, I would, I'm, I'm going to let him connect with you, but I think he'll be a solid guy for the um, interview. Yeah, I need it. So if whatever information you got, as far as if you got a number or Instagram, whatever, however I can reach out to him, I want to reach out to him and just say, hey, I sat down with Blair and he told me that I need to, you know, chop it up with you um, and just see what his story is. Just see his process, what his, what his mindset was to push through all that good stuff and just where he's at now. So we definitely need to make that happen, man. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, once we get done with this, I'm going to go ahead and just tag him in your, uh, send his um, name on Instagram to you so he can reach out. Cool. That that's a bet. Well, Blair, man, we appreciate you, man. Um, uh, you know, I I enjoyed today. Um, uh, it's a good way to start off a Saturday. Now you can do something fun and you know just relax a little bit. And so, uh, bro, we love you over here. I appreciate you. Keep doing your thing. You got two more exams to go. You on your way? Get up out of twenty twenty two with this CPA. And you, you on the bigger and better things, man. And you I'm trying family. to make my way to Houston at the end of April after tax season. I'm yeah, come on, man. Every, everybody's yeah. starting to visit. So that's that's love. I, I I love visitors and just being able to put them on food and, uh, you know, yeah. little, little stuff. Because we don't really, I mean, we don't go out as much. But we try to find, like, little food spots <laughs> and little, little, little he always, <laughs> bro, we eat on the weekend. I'm okay. telling you. <laughs> But, nah, we, uh, but like I said, man, we love you. We appreciate you being outro. on Big Boss Talk. Um, and, and we'll have you again, man, once you get that CPA uh, license and you get into Let's keep the rocking career. Just let us know what's going on, what changed, and, gonna stop you know, what now. to expect. So appreciate you. We here. Appreciate it, man. Peace out, buddy. All right, my guy. Love you, man. Love you, man. They say, Peanut, you so cold. I got We love you over here. We're gonna leave the same way we came in. Coming with the coldest podcast, you'll let me hear. The real ones who relate to fake ones gonna be able to hate. It means so much to me, and I'm so grateful.